Hi and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today we'll be taking a look at Spinnaker to say, our first upmarket model for Spinnaker. But before we move on, I just wanted to let you know this watch is still not available, as the sale starts on October 26th. However, the sign up for pre-orders starts on the 18th, so tomorrow. The reason I'm mentioning the pre-orders is because they bring the price down significantly from $850 down to $599 which in my opinion is a great price for what you get. In case you missed the pre-order, you can always use my code WATCHGEEK20 that will give you 20% discount on all the watches they offer. Usually when I do reviews, I go through the specs as I'm moving through the review. But with this, I believe the specs are the key to understanding the unusually high price for a Spinnaker and the upmarket comment from the beginning. So we'll first cover what exactly has Spinnaker done to justify the price that is more than double the amount they usually charge. Well, first of all, this watch is made of bronze, which is a living material that changes and ages as you wear it, giving the owner a special kind of experience. And right away, I want to tell you I'm against artificially induced patina, as not only does it make it fake in a way, but it also looks ugly and unhealthy, at least to me. Just wear your watch and allow it to age naturally, like a great wine. Don't rush it. The watch features 300 meters water resistance and a helium release valve, which is a crucial part for any true desk diver like myself, as it stops our watch from exploding as we're browsing the web looking for the next addition to our collection or watching YouTube videos of watches. Although that might be a gimmick that is there just for bragging rights, the rest of the specs really pack a punch. This is a first Swiss-made Spinnaker, as it features a Salita SW200. It is also the first Spinnaker to feature a loomed ceramic bezel, and it naturally comes with a sapphire crystal and a signed crown. The loom used is Superluminova, and it comes on a handmade Italian leather strap. So it has all the little details covered to make it a great watch to a watch enthusiast. And although to me personally, having Swiss-made label doesn't mean much, I do understand that there are people who won't buy a watch without it. But just like food, having all the right ingredients does not guarantee a great dish. So these specs may or may not result in a great watch. In the case of this Spinnaker, I'm happy to say that is not the case, as this turned out to be a wonderful watch. The case is classically shaped, which, although showing lack of courage, makes for a timeless watch that will look good even when other, braver designs become obsolete. It has a very Rolexy look to it, all the way to the large crown guards that really do guard the big easy-to-grip crown. The whole watch is massive, but not too massive. The diameter is 43 millimeters, while the lug to lug is 51.5. Too large for me personally, but despite that, I have real problems taking this off my wrist. The thickness is 15.5, and the watch weighs in at a hefty 129 grams. It comes on a 22 millimeter handmade thick Italian leather strap with a color matched and signed stainless steel buckle, making it perfect for desk diving. Although it has absolutely no sense on a diver's watch intended for getting wet, one cannot argue the fact the watch looks stunning with it, as the gray color complements the bronze case wonderfully. Despite that, I will be switching to a rubber strap, as to me, diver's watches belong on bracelets or rubber, and not leather. Then we move on to the bezel, which is made of bronze and features a loomed ceramic insert. The bezel teeth are well executed and the bezel is easy to grip and operate with very precise 120 clicks and perfect alignment, something Spinnaker seems to be doing well. I'm a huge fan of the ceramic insert as I like the idea of having it almost as scratch proof as the sapphire crystal. However, I'm also not a fan of fully loomed bezels as I find nighttime readability better on watches that have only the 12 o'clock pip loomed. I also find those watches more serious in a way, while I find these a bit tacky. I would like to see Spinnaker offer a full bronze bezel with just engraved, or maybe even better, raised numerals and markers, as I think it would make the watch look even more stunning. Then we move on to the dial. 
usually my favorite part when it comes to spinnaker watches, as they seem to have no idea how to make a simple, boring black dial. And that is a good thing, as every single spinnaker I handled so far had a unique dial, with more character than some brands have in their entire lineup. It's like their lack of courage in case design gets redeemed when it comes to dial design. From the textured dial found on the Floys to color faded dial of the Croft and sunburst dial on the Bradner, they're all unique and wonderful to look at. With this model, Spinnaker again did something new for them by going with this deep wave pattern reminiscent of the older generation Seamaster 300. The grooves are deep and well executed, making the new Omega 300 seem cheap with its laser cut handful of waves. I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but I find the old 300 was a better looking dial, despite the new one being made of ceramic. But back to Spinnaker. Like that wasn't enough, it has a raised chapter ring that carries minute markers and these beautiful applied hour markers that have gilt framed blobs of loom. The chapter ring reminds me a little of the Seiko BFK, but unlike Seiko, everything here is perfectly lined up. The loom application looks really interesting as the blobs are rounded and lacquered, giving them this shiny cue ball look. This all results in a very deep and dimensional dial. The logo is applied and matches the markers, hands and the framing around the date window. I'm a huge fan of the Spinnaker logo application, as I already said it reminds me of liquid metal, making the logo of the new Bulova Devil Diver for example look like it was made with a saw, a blunt one. The hands are simple, brushed and of proper length. They go well with the markers and balance the dial. And speaking of balance, the whole watch is well balanced. What I mean by that is that the case size matches the bezel size, which matches the dial that has exactly the right size for markers and hands, making the whole watch look great. And I think that is where the secret that makes a watch great or bad is hidden even when they have exactly the same specs. When you make something too big or too small in relation to the rest of the watch, the watch will look off, or in the case of this, will look awesome when you get all the proportions right. I think that's also the secret to Rolex watches looking so good and timeless. They're always well proportioned, regardless of their size. Well, not always, as I remember laughing at the first generation of the Explorer 39, when Rolex used the hands they had left over from the 36 Explorer. Or at least that's how I interpreted the ridiculously short hands that model had. But again, back to Spinnaker. Like I said at the beginning, it is powered by Salida SW200, a Swiss made automatic movement that beats at 28,800 BPH, comes with 38 hours of power reserve, has both hacking and hand winding, and features an instant day change at around midnight. To watch snobs, this is the final dot in making this a great watch as the same movement is found in watches costing a lot more than this. And although I'm personally a huge fan of even the basic 7S26, I won't deny I do enjoy the smoother seconds hand and the instant date change that this movement offers. The movement is visible through the case back and although it lacks any decoration, I like the fact they applied their logo on the rotor, unlike other Spinnaker watches where it's just printed on. So to conclude, is Spinnaker's attempt at moving up market a success? Only time will tell, but I know that this watch is my favorite Spinnaker so far. I recorded a review of the Croft and Floyce before I got this watch, although that video will go online a couple of weeks after this. In it, I said how my heart chooses Croft because of the dial and markers. Well, this watch to me is even better, as it seems like Croft got a matching case and bezel. When it comes to value of this, or any watch, it's a very hard thing to quantify. As to me, a watch powered by a 7S26 having a mineral crystal with an aluminium insert can be worth more than someone would be willing to pay for a watch with specs 10 times better, if I'm completely in love with its looks. It's the same case with this. I love the look of this thing so much I couldn't care less about the specs. But it's good to know they're there to support the suggested price just in case I get second thoughts. The only other watch that offers better value is the Zelos Mako Bronze, which at 40mm x 46 should be a better watch for me, 
but I never could warm up to the overly cluttered dial with four layers of markers and that crazy loom. If Spinnaker made this in 40mm, it would be the only bronze watch I would ever need. Well, this completes this week's review, so thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe by pressing this button right here, and until the next video, bye.